On September 14th, an international team of scientists led by Professor Jane Greaves at Cardiff University announced that they have detected what appears to be phosphine gas in Venus's atmosphere. The announcement was accompanied by a paper simply titled Phosphine Gas in the Cloud Decks of Venus, published by the 19-person team in the journal Nature Astronomy on the same day. The scientists used the James Clerk Maxwell Telescope in Hawaii to conduct the initial investigation, and later confirmed the initial results using the ALMA telescope located in northern Chile. So why is this a big deal? Phosphine, which is comprised of a single atom of phosphorus and three atoms of hydrogen, is considered a biosignature, a marker that scientists use as an indicator to the potential presence of life. On Earth, phosphine gas is typically produced through industrial processes or through anaerobic microbes. It's probably worth noting here that phosphine has been detected in other places within the solar system. Scientists have detected significant concentrations of phosphine in the atmospheres of Jupiter and Saturn. These two planets, though, are large hot gas giants rich in hydrogen and so have the necessary conditions for the formation of the gas. According to a December 2019 article by Jennifer Chu in MIT News, scientists surmised that the molecule, phosphine, was spontaneously thrown together within the bellies of these planets and as Sousa Silver describes, violently dredged up by huge planet-sized convective storms. Sousa Silver here is Clara Sousa Silver, a research scientist at MIT and one of the researchers involved in the discovery of phosphine. In Venus's atmosphere, the scientists detected phosphine at approximately 20 parts per billion, so a relatively small concentration, but enough to raise a red flag. Before jumping to life as a possible conclusion for the presence of phosphine, the scientists made an attempt to identify any chemical process that would account for the presence of the gas in that concentration. From their analysis and calculations, the team determined that no known process of chemistry can account for the rates observed. According to the paper's abstract, in the case of Venus, the presence of phosphine is unexplained after exhaustive study of steady-state chemistry and photochemical pathways, with no currently known abiotic production routes in Venus's atmosphere, clouds, surface and subsurface, or from lightning, volcanic, or meteoritic delivery. The paper goes on to state that phosphine could originate from unknown photochemistry or geochemistry or by analogy with biological production of phosphine on Earth from the presence of life. Today, Venus is a hellish planet. Venus has a thick atmosphere rich in carbon dioxide with an atmospheric pressure 90 times that of Earth's, clouds of sulfuric acid and surface temperatures as high as 864 degrees Fahrenheit, or 462 degrees Celsius, enough to melt lead. But scientists believe that sometime in the planet's history, that Venus could have once harbored a shallow liquid ocean and a habitable surface. Perhaps Venus was once more hospitable to life. And if it was, could life have migrated to the clouds? This is one hypothesis raised by the researchers in the study, as to how life could exist on Venus today. In fact, scientists have long hypothesized that there's a region in Venus's upper atmosphere where temperatures and pressures are similar to those on Earth, and where life could potentially be supported. So, missions to Venus? NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine weighed in on the announcement, noting, Life on Venus? The discovery of phosphine, a byproduct of anaerobic biology, is the most significant development yet in building the case for life off Earth. He also highlighted in his tweet that about 10 years ago, NASA discovered microbial life at 120,000 feet in Earth's upper atmosphere. It's time to prioritize Venus. So when's the next dedicated mission to study Venus's upper atmosphere? Or more specifically, the region where phosphine seems to be coming from? NASA so far has two candidate missions to Venus out of a total of four candidate missions as part of its discovery program. Those missions are Da Vinci Plus and Veritas. The former, if chosen, will analyze Venus's atmosphere, while the latter will map the planet's surface. The European Space Agency, on the other hand, has a mission to Venus targeted for launch in 2032. The Envision mission, of which NASA is a partner, is expected to perform high-resolution radar mapping of Venus as well as study the planet's atmosphere. And Russia and India also have missions planned. As mentioned previously, NASA's missions are still candidate missions, and ESA's isn't set to launch until 2032. 
but we may not have to wait that long for a dedicated mission to Venus in 2023. Founder and CEO of Rocket Lab, Peter Beck, has been expressing his love of Venus for a while now. In August of this year, he announced the company's plans to send a dedicated mission to the planet in 2023 to study the region 30 miles above the surface. On Tuesday, September 15th, in a series of tweets, Beck stated that the plan is to separate a probe of the main photon spacecraft and enter that into the clouds to sample. According to an article in the New York Times, Rocket Lab is currently working with Professor Sarah Seeger, Professor of Planetary Science, Physics, and Aerospace Engineering at MIT, and another researcher involved in the discovery of phosphine on the 2023 mission. Seeger is also working with the privately funded science-based program Breakthrough Initiatives as the principal investigator on a study inspired by the discovery. The news of the discovery of phosphine in Venus's atmosphere is really exciting. Of course, more research still has to be done in order to have conclusive findings about what is actually causing the molecule in those concentrations in that region of the atmosphere. Whatever the case, we're at a really exciting time for discovery and exploration. In terms of NASA missions, the Perseverance rover is currently on its way to Mars to look for signs of ancient microbial life. There's the Dragonfly mission to Saturn's largest moon, Titan, targeted for launch in 2026. If launched on time, it's expected to arrive at Titan in 2034. That mission will also search for signs of life. The Europa Clipper mission, on the other hand, will investigate Jupiter's icy moon Europa, deemed to harbor subsurface oceans. And that's just the beginning. There's a lot more missions planned by other international space agencies. I'll end with a quote by Peter Beck. If you can prove that there is life on Venus, then it's fair to assume that life's not unique but likely prolific throughout the universe. That's my view anyway. This brings up another point and maybe some existential questions. Perhaps we must pass the Great Filter. <laughs>